Hello everybody, so I want to cover lithium stocks today for the first time on the channel and a spoiler alert likely for the last time on the channel and you'll see why in this video, uh, why this is not the type of stock I'm interested in, no in, um, in owning, but you know, I, I think as far as the numbers go, it's noteworthy to say that there's a lot of good things going for, for them. And I'm, I'm giving them a lot of credit for the good things going on. I.e. the growth right now is 48% for lithium. Uh, lithium is more of, a, more of a micro cap in the space. And Albemarle, which is a giant in the space, has 47% revenue growth. The gross margins are excellent. The mining business is, 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 a, is, a, is a great business. Um, and the valuations are pretty cheap too at, at, at a 4 times uh, EV over sales for lithium 2.48 for Albemarle is pretty cheap and also these stocks I think could appeal to a lot of value investors because if you look at these EBITDA yields for this year they're 13 and 15 percent and 20 and 24 percent EBITDA is projected to grow for both of these companies these are stocks in my view that will likely beat the market but if you own stocks that beat the market more than, than the lithium stocks then why would you want to own the lithium stocks with the risk um, and I'll, I'll get to that and which is why my, my view is that the, the best lithium play out there is Tesla is essentially my view but let, let's let's go ahead and, and just just talk about this for a second why would anybody want to invest in, in 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 mining right I would I would never talk about a gold miner on this channel or a copper miner this is not something I would ever 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 talk about let alone a petroleum company um, but the reason for mining stocks while mining stocks are even relevant on this channel of course is because the main thesis of this channel one of the main thesis one of the main stocks is energy revolution stocks and energy revolution stocks need lithium there's a lot of lithium that is needed right now for this electric vehicle revolution in fact so this is the investor presentation for for uh, for um Lithium here, uh, Livent is, is the name of, of, of the company, uh, ticker symbol Lithium. Uh, they they um, they predict 44% uh, uh, adoption of EVs in in, uh, in 2030, and um, Albemarle predicts 48% of EVs in 20, 2030. And I would argue, for example, Albemarle uses 48%. That's the S and P Global estimates. And uh, we know uh, uh, we know how anti-Tesla S and P has been, right? With uh, with the credit ratings, uh, the late inclusion in the S and P 500, uh, a very late inclusion, which has killed the returns of S and P 500, by the way. Which is why, if if one has to own index funds, triple Q is the way to go, in my view. This is like the most optimistic prediction is 48 percent by 2030, and that's S and P Global, which is an anti-Tesla company, in my view, by the way, by 2030 will be will be higher than 48% in my view. In my, I, I don't have an issue imagining 60-ish percent adoption of EVs um, in, in, um, in 2030. And that is when we talk adoption we, or market penetration in this case, we mean the share of new cars sold in 2030. What will be the share of new cars sold uh, for, for, um, for EVs? And, you know, keep in mind, S&P Globals, they do these reports uh, for legacy auto, so they can't really f exactly say, oh, it's going to be 60 70%. But I, I think it's going to be much higher. It's, it's overwhelming. You know, uh, Tesla Model Y is already the best-selling car in the world, and, and, and this is only going to continue, and I can't even imagine... Um, how crazy the numbers are going to be when Tesla releases the Model 2. Uh, anyways, this is not a Tesla video. This is a lithium stock video. So let me start with a warning, a little warning here. A warning of, on commodities. I don't like commodities. The reason why I don't like commodities is when, when the prices of a commodity rise, when those prices rise, what happens is that you have more companies that get into the space. And the companies already in the space also extract more lithium out of the ground and they pump it out of the ground, and they, they dump it onto the market. And when it's dumped onto the market, the price goes down. So price goes up, more lithium gets out of the ground, price goes down. Price goes down. <laughs> Anyways, demand goes up. It's, it's a loop. It's a perpetual, it's a perpetual loop um, which, which keeps a cap as to the price of these natural resources. And, you know, there is this myth uh, that we're not going to find more natural resources of X, Y, Z, 
And the truth is we always find new natural resources. And uh, we'll see at the end of this video, the U.S. may have found the, the, lo the largest uh, deposit of lithium in the world may have been found in the U.S. in Nevada. And, and you know, who knows how many there are, how many lithium deposits there are. It's just a matter of searching for them. What I don't like about commodities is, is that it's a price taker business. It's very hard to differentiate yourself. Uh, in fact, Albemarle tries to differentiate yourself with, with, with having better quality lithium, but it's very hard to do, period. It's a price taker's business. Uh, um, the holy grail would be to enhance lithium, but, but I, I, I don't think they're having much success doing that. Or at least if they are, it's still going to be a price taker business where the buyer of the lithium are just going to buy the cheapest lithium out there. Just like if you buy gasoline for your car or electricity, you're trying to buy it at the cheapest price. Um, and historically, in my view, investing in the end product has often yielded greater returns. For greater returns, in my view, will be achieved by Tesla. Which will, which will overwhelmingly benefit from the, the adoption of EVs. So I believe Tesla is a better play than this. Um, and I have, I, I have even more concerns on lithium. Uh, one concern is that Tesla is entering the processing space, right? With their, with their plants that they're building in Corpus Christi, they're entering the lithium processing space. Uh, who's to say that they're not entering the mining space at some point, or at least uh, uh, be able to buy low low lower quality lithium and process it themselves um any type of jv uh, joint venture like that or partnership like that who knows how far vertical integration will go for a company like tesla that's point number one and point number two scientists as well as companies like catl and byd and remember catl has a big partnership with tesla big provider of batteries to tesla they're all working hard to either develop lithium free batteries so one of the one of the famous ones is the sodium ion uh, battery which is a, a salt based uh, battery it's it's not worthy to say that, that lithium is a a cousin of of uh, of uh, of salt of, of sodium it's a, it's a cousin of so sodium in the in the periodic table and so that's why a lot of, a lot of um, scientists are trying to develop batteries that um, use more salt and use less lithium so we don't we don't know how little lithium is going to be used in the future but there may be less lithium used in the future uh in, in cars so that's in my view another 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 concern uh, which is why i'm slowly uh, you know staying away from these stocks but let me you know let me let me let me show you something good so something so let me get started with livent livent corporation ticker symbol lithium the revenue growth is excellent. Uh, they grew revenue at 32% from uh, uh, FY 2022 to their prediction. This is actually their outlook to their outlook for, for the full year of 2023, which we have not gone through yet, right? We're, we're, we're two quarters in. Uh, they're predicting 32% revenue growth above my threshold. Um, and analyst outlook for the next 12 months, right? So the next two quarters plus the first two quarters of 2024, analysts are saying 48% revenue growth. So outstanding revenue growth numbers. Was the, what does uh, Livent do? Well, um, Livent is, is is more of a pure play in batteries. Uh, well, both of them, bo both Albemarle and Lithium are turning mostly batteries companies. But 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 Livent um, has so, some something close to roughly uh, 80 85 percent of a business, um, which is close to, actually a little less than that. Uh, actually, seventy percent. My bad. Seven, about seventy percent of a business. About seventy percent of a business uh, for for uh, live end has everything to do with batteries, and it's batteries for EVs, right? The, the the biggest demand for batteries will be in EVs, but also energy storage. Uh, that's kind of the next S-curve that's going to tack on to the EV S-curves once the EV the f curve slow down. E-bikes, e-bikes, you know, very popular in China, for example, less less popular in Europe and, and in the US, believe it or not, because I know they're very popular in Europe, but they're not nearly as popular in Europe as they are in China. Uh, so I understand why they put it in there, given their Asia exposure revenue to geography 70%. And power tools, power tools, um, I think is important business, but it may be more of an ancillary uh, business for 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 them. Um, but nonetheless, a growing a growing thing. And the thirty percent is things like uh, uh, um, petrochemical, electronic chemical. We'll see when we get into petrochemicals. That's that's going to be especially true for Albemarle. They have a, a petrochemical business, but for them, it's a, it's a grease business, and they deal with polymers, uh, some things in pharma, some things in le electronic chemicals. Anyways, it's chemistry business. It's a, roughly this batteries are chemistry. Both of these stocks are are in the chemistry uh, business. 
So, um, what's my conclusion? It's going to be a quick conclusion because I, I have enough red flags for me to not want to do a deep dive in any, any of these stocks. So, my conclusion is: is yes, the demand, the demand for lithium, we may we may see doublings and over an over doubling or two over doublings in sales for for a company like Livent uh, over the next 10 years we we may see that and that's why i think these are these are stocks that are going to beat the s p 500 in fact if you look from the 2020 lows of their sales to to now they nearly tripled their sales but in my view the lithium mining business not only is it a cyclical business but it's a business where where we don't have absolute certainty of how that demand is going to shape out and 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 we don't know how many more mines are going to be coming online uh, which which will have a great impact on on you know on on the price of lithium. Uh, you, you know this this reminds me uh, the, the solar panel business, the solar panel business, which is another price takers business, right? Uh, m- most solar installers don't care what solar panels they buy. All solar panels are essentially the same to the point that solar panels have become a commodity, and prices keep going down as uh, we we build more of them. I think the same could happen with, with lithium as we flood the market with lithium. Um, we um, as we flood the market with lithium that that. That cost may just go down. You know, keep in mind also one of the reasons why oil is so expensive is because we have an oil cartel. You know, as far oil should be much cheaper than it is today if it behaved like a like a true commodity. If oil behaved like a true commodity, it should be much cheaper uh, than it possibly is right now. And you know, there's no cartel of lithium. There's no there's no mutual restraint of getting lithium out of the ground for all of these companies that would make the price of a commodity go up forever. Anyways, this is just my just my two cents. Bear in mind, I'm not an, I'm not an expert in uh, in mining stocks either. That's 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 always important to you know your circle of competence. Let me run to Albemarle. So when it comes to Albemarle. Uh, they've been growing volumes, and so all, they, all, all Albemarle is predicting uh, for us is their volume growth. So they, they grew 47% um, over the, the trailing 12 months. Now they had the headwind of hi- highly expensive lithium, just like uh, just like Livent. But a company like, like Albemarle, they're predicting for us um, the, the deliveries. Right, the volume, how much volume there's going to be between 20 and 30%. Well, that alone is right under my threshold, isn't it? So for me to bet on a stock like Albemarle, I, will, I would have to believe that the price of lithium is going to go up in the very, very, very long term. Also, no, no, noteworthy t- to mention is that uh, Albemarle, the lithium business, is only 64%. The rest is, is, is bromine, bromine, which is a, a, fire, a fire retardant. And the, the third one, 12%, is Ketchen. Ketchen um, is, a pr- is a producer of, of catalysts, which is something that is heavily used in the petrochemical industry. Uh, so, you know, two businesses I don't necessarily want to be in, right? right? The petrochemical industry, I don't, I don't want to be in. It's not a growth sector. And the fire retardant business, I, I, don't, I don't really want to be in that business, I don't think. Uh, so, so anyways, to get exposure to lithium, uh, you have to buy the whole company, the whole stock, and even that exposure to lithium, they're predicting volume sales that don't reach my threshold of 30% revenue growth. And this is all dependent on the price of lithium staying flat. And I have no idea where the price of lithium is going to go. Now, what's another problem? For Albemarle, now, uh, of course, we, we, we've seen a, a major increase in prices of lithium. So ignore the, ignore, ignore the past five quarters, but look over the long term. This is, this is more than 13 years of quarters, quarterly revenues. Um, it's cyclical. It's a, it's, a, it's a cyclical business. And I'm not, I'm not that interested in that type of business that doesn't grow all the time. I want to invest in a business that's going to have a product adoption curve where it's going to grow all the time. This is not a business that is growing all the time. So my, my style of investing just doesn't work for a company like Albemarle. Sorry, Albemarle. And even though, even though those companies fit, fit my spreadsheet on my, you know, on my usual metric, it fits what I'm looking for. Uh, when I dig deeper, it, it just it just doesn't it just doesn't it's just not an industry what i want to be in i have over red flags uh, over reasons why i don't like those firms acquisitions so both of them brag about recent acquisitions or ongoing acquisitions and i can tell you one thing about acquisitions and, and buying sprees in general i've been in the stock market long enough 
right? I mean, I've been saying I've been in the stock market for 10 years, for 10 years. So it's, it's more like 14 years now. Uh, uh, anyway, anyways, long enough to tell you, long enough to tell you that acquisitions are often a red flag. And they almost never work. And I know it's a bold claim. It's a bold thing to say. And CEOs will always claim acquisition are a great thing. They, al- they almost never work. Developing something in-house is always, always better. And why, why, why acquisitions don't, don't work is that, you know, typically to do an acquisition, you have to pay 30% more than what it's worth. You know, you, know, you have to pay the acquisition premium. And that acquisition premium... You know, it's going to be thirty percent to get a controlling share of a company. Uh, you know, whenever you acquire a firm, talent usually leaves. You 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 lose your best talent. Uh, you know, there are some rare rare exceptions, like in like in tech. But but even then, those rare exceptions in tech, for example, only work when you buy when you acquire a firm, a tech firm, very very early on. You know, like Facebook's acquisition of Instagram, great acquisition. Why did it work? They only had twelve employees. That's it. That's all they had when Facebook acquired Instagram. That's why it worked. They always had 12 employees. When Google acquired Android, Android was a 50 million business. It was a tiny business. So acquisitions sometimes work in tech when you get a very, very tiny business and when you buy a company when it's very young. But but these are these are more mature companies that are getting purchased here. So so I don't uh, I'm to me this is this is kind of a red flag. I do not like acquisitions. I have been burned many times on acquisitions, and 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 I don't like that. And and and, and this this may be more empire building. Who knows how many more mines they will acquire? Um, another thing I don't like at all. <laughs> And, you know, if you're a value investor, you might yell at me for saying that. Uh, That's okay. Uh, Albemarle is a dividend aristocrat. I don't like that at all. I don't like that at all. Uh, And you may say, oh, the yield is nothing. You know, it's kind of an NVIDIA type type yield. Well, higher than NVIDIA, but the yield is... is 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 more symbolic here? Uh, well, no, it's not because the stock ran up. Actually, if you look at at if you look at the the the, the yield over the long term, the yield w- w- was higher. This was a yield that was in the in the two to three percent range a while uh, a while back, and and. and and that's why you know I, I don't like that because if the stock were were, were, were to go down, um, that yield that, that yield of course would, would go up in relation. But if you would if they would have less revenues, um, and they made less money, that yield could be a burden for the company, right? That yield could be a burden, and if that yield is a burden. Uh, that means you're going to have a shareholder base that's going to be upset. That's going to start uh, selling uh, the stock. And also you have a shareholder base, of course, when you're a dividend aristocrat, i.e. you've raised your dividend for more than 25 years, your shareholder base is asking for raises every single year. They want a raise in that dividend. Uh, and if one day you stop raising the dividend, just stop raising it, not even cut it, just stop raising, you'll see a lot of shareholders go away. And sell off your stock. So, so, so I think this is an overhang that I, that I don't like, and I, w- I would much rather uh, see a company like Albemarle take on less debt because they have debt. So take on less debt and use that money, that dividend, to fund your growth. Uh, be be self funded. And maybe I look at this too much as a, 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 a with a, with a value lens, but I don't like at all that they pay a dividend. And lastly. And this is a this is this these these statements go go to, go in together, um, but this is what I don't like is there's always new deposits that are going to be found, and these new deposits are always going to pressure to pressure uh, um, the the price of these commodities and pressure the stock right you know. Uh, I, I've been hearing for the past five years that we didn't have any rare earth in the U.S., that the U.S. had no rare earth. And then I see this headline, you know, four days ago, oh, oh, we ju- oh never mind, we just found the biggest rare earth deposit in, in the world in the U.S. So how many biggest, biggest lithium deposit, how many biggest lithium de- deposits are there out there? I thought Chile was the biggest lithium deposit. There's, there's the lithium de- we're going to find more lithium deposits. It's just a matter of finding them. Right, and, and we're always finding new ones, and every time you find a new one, well, you could you could you could have the price of that commodity. That's that's a threat to me. That's something that's something I don't like. You could have a piece of news that could hurt the business long term. Oh, we just found a new mine. And then another thing that I don't like, and 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 I see how sometimes value investors could like that because they could say, hey, it's 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 a moat, um, but but it's permissions permits. Oftentimes, you'll have local governments uh, who are going to be against. Against the establishment of mines, um, and, and you know, if you if you um, 
you don't want to fight against against the government. If the government doesn't want you to do business, it's not a good situation to be in. You know, look at a company like like, like Tesla or look at a company like um, Enphase, where the government wants them to do a bunch of business. Well, when the government wants you to, to do a bunch of business, they give you a $7,500 tax credit for your consumers. They give you 11 cents per kilowatt hours uh, for your micro inverters. For example, if you follow the solar space, they give you a bunch of money when the government wants you to thrive. When the government does, does not want you to thrive, you'll have protests, you'll have red tape, you, you'll have to apply for more permits, more permission, halts to your to your, um, to your factories, to your plants. It's it's a big hurdle in business. You know, look, look at what has happened in Tesla you know Tesla was all excited about Giga Mexico about building the Tesla Model 2 right the smaller car in Mexico it, the, 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 the Mexico project is on hold the government doesn't seem to want them there so now now Elon Musk has said well you know what we're going we're, we're, we're going to develop our next car now in Austin we're going to develop in in the US so you have to have governments that are aligned with you and 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 and, and, and these companies you know I I, I, I I have little doubt that at the federal level, the federal level wants them to thrive. But mines are, are, are inherently local. They're at the local level. And, and you see this new deposit, for example, that was found in Nevada. You already have extensive protests, protests, extensive protests against the exploitation of these new, um, of the, of these new uh, deposits. And, 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 and again, they're, they're, that just because you have protests in the U.S., yeah, that's going to hurt a firm, U.S. firms like Albemarle. Albemarle Mall, for example, is going to hurt them quite a bit. Um, but there's countries who are going to have fewer protests, so you're still going to get those mines online. Um, anyways, it's just a general type of business that I'm not compelled um, to buy. If you are, uh, good luck to you. You know, I believe these are companies that will out, um, you know, out earn the S and P five hundred. They'll do better than the S and P five hundred, in my my view, my humble opinion. But it's just not not for me, not my cup of tea. And this was not investment advice at all. This is just entertainment. I hope you were entertained. I appreciate your likes. I appreciate if you subscribe to the channel. Please follow me on X and have a wonderful day. Thanks for watching.